I, did I do it right? I think I'm live. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Uh, this is this. I, I assume this is me, Mark Trinidad. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Hunger for Humor, Humor for Hunger, a live broadcast that we're doing on Facebook Live. I assume, I hope, <laughs> I, I think I pressed all the right buttons. Uh, if, if it was my wife, she would say I press a lot of buttons, but that's another story altogether for another time. Uh, I, I am here to be your host for this, our second broadcast. Uh, our co-host, Danish Anwar, has left me in charge because he assumes that I have the technical ability to be able to do this <laughs> properly. <laughs> he's, he's wrong because I don't have my banner overlays up, which is, see, there we go. Uh, hunger for humor. <laughs> humor for hunger. Being brought to us by the good people of Barry Uncovered and Canada's top mayor award. This show <laughs> has been conceptualized in order to raise funds for the food bank. Now, on a serious note, I know you're looking at me and you're, you're wondering if I am the right person to be in charge of something raising funds for the <laughs> food bank. And I'm going to get deadly serious here. Uh, because of this uh, pandemic situation that we find ourselves in, I got real close to having to call my friends at the food bank and say, yo, you got soup to hook a brother up. Uh, but fortunately, due to the lovely government that we have in Canada, I've been able to skirt out of that scenario and I did not have to, but some people weren't that lucky and they do have to utilize the food bank. And it's a lot of people that have had to utilize it. So the food bank is in need right now to try and get more items inside the food bank. So. Uh, we conceptualize this show to help raise funds so that they can, you know, be able to, to, to help all those people out. And I'm going to throw up a link right now. Look, I did it properly. Shut up. All of y'all that think I couldn't have done it. I did it. See, see, I put up, it says donate at www.humor for the number four. That's the number four hunger.com. And we also have humor for hunger. Uh, .ca as well, because we thought some of y'all might make that mistake. So don't make that mistake. And by the way, uh, the other host, uh, once again, Danish Anwar, uh, he, he's, he's, a, he's a guy that was born in Russia, but don't, don't let that affect you. Uh, he has a bet with me. He has bet that I will not make as much money in terms of donations as his people. So ladies and gentlemen, let's work together. When you make a donation, when you go to humorforhunger.com or .ca, remember that's humor, the number four, and spelt the Canadian way. When you go there, when you donate, put the number four in there somewhere. $4, $40, $400, whatever. <laughs> Just put the number four in there. That way, he knows that's one of my people, and he's not going to beat me, okay? I'm going to win at this. I'm already ahead. I've checked the numbers. I'm ahead. And it's all for a good cause anyway. Don't let our little rivalry confuse you in any way whatsoever. Okay. We have a bevy of, uh, don't know if that's the right word for the collective of comedians, but we have a, a string of them. We have a heap of them that are coming on, <laughs> donating their time. Some of them are laughing in the background right now. Don't, don't worry about them. Ignore them right now. If you what? give them a, any attention, they're going, to, they're going to make more noise. Stop it. Behave. Okay. Uh, we have a bevy of comedians for you guys tonight. Now, they have lots of credits. They've done a lot of things in their lives. Uh, they're very special. As a matter of fact, I have a whole book from one of them to read out because it's a very long line of credits. Oh, by the way, I have a book. Oh, okay. So... Uh, because I have you guys gathered here today, uh, I actually have, ooh, I should check the comments. There are people commenting. Oh, hi, everybody. I see you there, Don. I have a book that I'm writing because uh, I don't know what you guys did during the pandemic, but I did some stuff because I had a, um, a lot of fucking spare time because <laughs> I had nothing else to do. So I'm, I'm writing a book. I don't, I'm going to, okay, Don, I, I'll talk to you in a minute, but you guys, I, I want to run it by you. And, uh, and, and see if it's something good, okay? Now, 
Um, I don't know if you guys realize we're giving away some prize packs today to people that liked and shared this event. Uh, it's on Facebook somewhere. You can find it on Facebook if you go to Canada's Top Mayor Award or uh, Facebook.com, all that stuff. Uh, Barry Uncovered. Go to there and share the event. Okay. Uh, what was I just saying? Do you guys remember I was talking about what? Oh, the book, the book. Okay. So I have a book that I started writing. I'm going to read it to you guys. In the comments, could you, would you mind, uh, let me know if you think that this is a good book to publish. I'm going to self-publish it. It's a children's book because I, myself, I have four children. I, I claim all of them. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm working on a children's book. My goal with this book is to use stories in nature. So stories that come from nature because that's it. Those do well. I checked Amazon.com. They do well. Anyway, uh, to teach valuable morals because I think nowadays morals are missing. <clears throat> so allow me to share this with you. Okay. This story is about uh, Ocho, the Argonaut octopus. Did you get that, Ocho? Because Ocho <laughs> is eight octopus read a book okay uh this it's a great name anyway ocho uh, uh okay ocho is swimming along living his best octopus life when in the distance he sees a beautiful female octopus <laughs> yeah okay now ocho knows that life as an octopus is filled with danger and not only must he survive but he must also carry on his species all right so when he sees his beautiful female octopus in the distance he falls in love immediately and this is uh this this is how i get the conservatives involved because they they'll see this and they love the fact that it's love at first sight they love this kind of story anyway and disney would probably pick this up anyway so okay okay he shoots off his detachable penis now, like a sperm scud missile, it travels across the depths. Like the Night King trying to slay a dragon, he is careful not to put too much spin on his tentacle toss for fear of a dog leg to the left. Because as the great philosopher uh, Eminem once said, you only get one shot. <laughs> See, I'm tying in local, uh, st no, no, so no, okay. If his aim is true and he hits his target, his bride can then decide whether to use his donation or not. Uh, this, is how, this is how I get the progressives involved because it's her body, her choice. You see how I'm trying to hit everybody to sell as many books as possible. Okay, 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 okay. Ocho will never know, of course, because he dies. <laughs> Yes, he dies. It's factual. Look this up. The Argonaut after he shoot and psh, dead. Okay, because oh, who wants guy. to live without a penis anyway? All right, we'll we'll bring him back in the sequel, like Jon Snow. For anyway, ah. So what is the moral of this story? Well, the moral of this story is important for the millennial generation. It says if you see a beautiful girl and send her a dick pic, you deserve to die. How about that? Is that a good moral of a wonderful book? No. Just me? Lovely book. Okay. I'm doing my part. I'm trying to help society. <laughs> okay. Once again, we have a bevy of comedians. Uh, not, not just, of course, <laughs> me. Uh, I've been doing this for, for, for 25 years. Uh, when I started, I was just a wee young lad. But now I'm an older a guy that, <laughs> that is still trying to learn how to use technology. Am I broadcasting? <laughs> this is how bad I am. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Oh, there I am. See, see, look, uh, I had people that actually said good things about my book. They said very funny. Canada's top male award. Judge me all you want, whatever. <laughs> God, judge the shit out of me. Uh, so once again, if you're going to donate money, yes, you are going to donate money. Please donate it to humorforhunger.com. Now, it's at this point, before I bring on your first comedian, I want to shout out to our sponsors because shows like this would never be able to be achieved if we didn't have sponsors. Those are the people that put up the money so that they could get uh, uh, people like us uh, paid because we're 
poor. Okay, so <laughs> our our <laughs> our lovely uh, Lily Financial Group, uh, because you need to have estate planning and prepare for the future, which is something we comedians need because uh, <laughs> we we don't plan shit. And we have Stuart Estin LLP barristers and solicitors. I'll be the first one to tell you you need some lawyers in your life because <laughs> shit happens and and you you need somebody to help you and uh, nine out of ten times the cops won't so we need lawyers and of course infinity printing solutions uh thank you very much uh, i know i just put up your banner in a very horrible way but please remember i i don't even know how to spell wi-fi far less run a, a show like this and then i'll go back to hear okay and of course mofats mazda as well too for uh, for helping to get this show put on mofats mazda right here in barry thank you very much for for your sponsorship as well okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go to our first comedian uh listen right now we're in the, the depths of a pandemic our first comedian actually uh fell ill uh, i don't know if he got the first vaccine or not please conspiracy theorists don't ask me any questions in the chat i have no idea uh, he's not well, so he is unable to make it. But our first comedian uh, who will be sliding into that number one spot is a comedian uh, that has been featured on Rogers TV, Breakfast Television, and Real Abilities Film Festival. She is a comedian with cerebral palsy. Yeah. Yes, I said it right. I'm so, I'm, I get tongue tied. And we are very proud to have her. Now watch as I mess up trying to put her on the screen. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Here we go. Oh my God, I did it hey, right. You did <laughs> it. There you go. This is Desiree Walsh. Everybody welcome Desiree Lo Walsh. It, yes, cerebral policy is the word that I, I <laughs> yep. stumbled on. Yep. How about it, Desiree? Hello. Um, I do have cerebral palsy. I use a wheelchair. You just can't see it because we're on the computer. Um, I just didn't want anybody thinking I was doing like very specific, edgy material about disability in society as an able-bodied white woman. <laughs> I have noticed society treats the disabled <laughs> different and I have a hot take. No, this is my actual life and it's it's going pretty good. Um, I'm actually enjoying the quarantine. I know it's... Um, funny to hear someone say that but i i like it because none of you walkies touch me when i'm out yeah <laughs> that's true in the before times apparently i look like a shopping cart to you people that needs to be returned to walmart <laughs> um i also like it because nobody tells me stories about their friends in wheelchairs when i'm at the grocery store because in the before times strangers used to approach me quite a bit and tell me about their friends in wheelchairs and it was often like I'm really sorry to hear about your friend Mark but I don't have any wheelchair basketball information <laughs> oh. also it is midnight and I am buying four types of cheese in Garfield PJs I am obviously high please leave me alone <laughs> I am not disabled Google unless you have acid <laughs> um, before the pandemic, I was lucky enough to go on a date. Well, it wasn't so much of a date as it was a man sat down beside me in a Starbucks and asked if I had any wheelchair basketball information for his friend Mark. <laughs> but I needed a win, so we're going to call that a date. And myself and this man got to talking about disability and the media. Because apparently I don't like small talk. None of this has the weather. <laughs> and I, I told this man that the media, I wish the media understood that people with disabilities do more than go to the bank and die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to tell you where I work during the day when I'm not telling jokes. I work in a bank. I am the problem. I am a living stereotype. Yeah. Um, for those of you who may not be aware, um, banks in Canada have really good equity programs. So they hire a lot of disabled people and we are heavily featured in their media campaigns. Yes. The best
best jokes are the ones you have to explain. <laughs> if you're not giving a nine minute TED talk after every punchline, you're you're really doing it wrong. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don't don't listen to any of the other comics. I am right. That is a true fact. Um, I've been really lucky in this pandemic because I've been able to do online comedy and I really, really like it because I can actually do comedy and then go use the bathroom in between sets. And it's amazing. <laughs> like, is this what it's like to be able-bodied walkies? Because it's amazing. It's so much fun. Being physically comfortable is amazing. No wonder you all are so smug. This is fun. Yeah, um, I've actually had the opportunity to do a lot of American-based um, Zoom and virtual shows. And I really, really like it because I'm learning so much about America. But for example, did you all know New Jersey is a state? Yes. <laughs> I sure didn't. Um, for most of my life, I thought it was a suburb of New York. Turns out I was getting it mixed up with Staten Island. Um, I don't know very much about Staten Island. So I decided to Google it. And a tourism website with 13 interesting facts about Staten Island came up. <laughs> and the best one, the most flattering was that they have the largest garbage dump in the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Isn't the garbage something we're supposed to be hiding from the tourists? Like, I'm from Toronto, and on our tourism websites, we talk about the lake and the Sky Dome and the CN Tower. Um, my tourism website is from the 90s. That's why we call it the Sky Dome. But we leave out the negative parts. Like, there's no affordable housing. It's not very wheelchair accessible. And we have a little bit of a homeless issue. Um, and we also don't talk about the garbage. Also, we're kind of mean for a Canadian city, but you should come see us. Yeah. Um, the other thing I've learned about America is their food is a little bit different. Um, they have something called an uncrustable. We don't have these abominations in Canada, but I'm told it is similar to the white trash cousin of the Pop-Tart or the red-headed stepchild of the Pizza Pocket. Um, for those who do not know, it is basically a frozen peanut butter sandwich with the crust cut off. Yep. That's what it is. Um, wow. And my question to the Americans is, like, wouldn't it be easier to make a peanut butter sandwich? <laughs> with an Uncrustable, you have to thaw it and cook it and then eat it. And it just, it seems like a lot of work. <laughs> really, it does. Um, recently, I did this joke, and an American comedian was like, no, no, like, you don't have to thaw them. You just eat them frozen. And now I have more questions than I have answers, America, because why are we paying money for the worst day of grade two when the ice pack fell on top of the sandwich? Why are we paying money for that? Um, and then another comedian, if you take anything away from my set, please take away that American comedians are very helpful, was like, no, 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 like you don't eat it frozen. You just take it out of the freezer and you let it thaw naturally. And now I have the question, is it a friend or is it food? Because, like, what do you mean? You take it out of the freezer, cuddle it, hold it close, sing it, kind of dancer till it's the desired temperature you need. <laughs> um, I was actually lucky enough to have an American comedian send me some Uncrustables. Yeah, um, they arrived from Virginia. <laughs> Um, completely unfrozen, so it was basically food poisoning in a pouch, but I'm a trooper, so I, I continued. And I more or less have the same questions. Wouldn't it be easier to make a peanut butter sandwich? Yeah. Um, what I'm saying is I think Smuckers needs to be stopped between that and the goober grape. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about what's wrong with the U.S. or what happened. And quite frankly, as a person who only recently discovered New Jersey was a state and about two weeks ago asked the question, what is a New England? I don't believe I'm entitled to an opinion. But I think it started with the invention of the Uncrustable. <laughs>
The other thing I was surprised to learn about America is the lexicon handicapped is still widely used in the United States. And I thought that was interesting because in Canada, that's kind of a slur. And you really shouldn't use the word handicapped, not because it's ignorant, but because someone might hear you and then get all excited because you obviously have a time machine to <laughs> 2020 because you have obviously just come from the 1980s. So they will be disappointed when they discover you are just a dad with a trucker hat. Yep. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Yeah, um, you can still use the word crippled, but the problem with the word crippled is that only certain people can say it, and you often don't know if you're one of those people till well after it is out of your mouth, and then it is awkward. Yeah. On a personal note, I hate the term special needs because I feel like it's making it sound like disabled people are asking for a bowl of just green M&Ms. <laughs> yeah. I am not asking for just a bowl of green M&Ms. I, I want the same resources as the walkies. I want to be in the same spaces as the walkies without actually being a walkie because it that looks terrible. I do not know how you guys do it all day on your meat legs. Yeah. <laughs> That being said, if you did have a bowl of green M&Ms, I would gladly <laughs> take them because green M&Ms are delicious. I think we can all agree. Um, thank you. That is my time. I have been Desiree Walsh, and let's bring Mark back up. Yay! Oh, my gosh. I'm learning. Look, I have everybody on the screen. Look at it. I, I'm learning your choice. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> I'm back! Desiree Walsh, everybody, a round of applause for Desiree. De Desiree, I, oh my gosh, I, I think when you were talking about the guy in the 80s trucker hat that has all the wrong things, that's me. I say the wrong things around my kids and they, they want to pound me, but I'm stupid, okay? I'll be the first one to admit it. I'm dumb. It's not that I want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's just like I'm stupid. So I, I hope you... Forgive me when I do eventually say something really wrong. <laughs> I will. Because I, I will. <laughs> I love you too. Okay. <laughs> and at this point again, look at this. Look, wait, wait. I want to put this up for, uh, I'm going to get you back on screen, Desiree. Look, okay. look uh, back on, how do I get you back on okay. the screen? Here we go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to put this up. Did I put it up? You're a very funny lady. Look at that. Boom, with a capital Y, because they wanted to make sure you knew that. Boom. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back to me. So I just wanted to make sure you, you saw that. <laughs> and now me, though, is what you I, said, right? <laughs> I swear to God, every time I look at myself on the screen, because I haven't been able to cut this beard in so long, I, it reminds me of Grizzly Adams. None of y'all would know that reference at all. Only the people <laughs> who know that... I think Grizzly Adams came out in the seventies with beachcombers. It was around in those days, beachcombers relic. No, I'm the only one that understands <laughs> any of these references. You're so old. I know. <laughs> beachcombers. Oh beachcombers guy. And, and the one with the dog that rescues people. Nobody saw the show with the dog. The little is hobo. People. The little is hobo. I look like a hobo at this point. Okay. Last All right. Last, wow, look at you bringing up Lassie. Everybody <laughs> cried. We wish that was still on. And Flipper, anyway. This, <laughs> yeah, yeah. None of y'all know Flipper. Look at that. I brought Flipper. one that you didn't even know. We have a Flipper. It's, I'm not the only aged one in here. Look, Jane says we are aged. She knows. <sighs> I got all the old references, you know, but none of y'all would know what the hell because you're millennials. Anyway, <clears throat> anyhow. Uh, once again, let me point out to our sponsors, huge uh, shout out to our sponsors, Lily Financial Group. I know I have something that I could put up. Uh, boom, there we go. Lily Financial Group, uh, to, so that we could plan for our retirement, uh, w which at this rate, because of the pandemic and not being able to earn income for the past 16 months, is never going to happen. Uh, Infinity Printing Solutions <laughs> and Stuart solicitors and barristers listen all right here's here's where i'm gonna talk a little bit 
about um, having a lawyer in, in your back pocket. Uh, this is a true story. I'm going to share this before you bring on, I bring on our next comedian. This is a true story. Dead ass. I think that's what the young people call it now. <laughs> is that right, Rush? Dead ass? Anyway. Young people, though. I don't know. Yeah, you one of them. Okay. <laughs> this is a true story. I, I have four children, uh, and one of my children came to me and said to me, Daddy, I want to buy a snake. Now, for the people that don't know me, I'm originally from a little island in the Caribbean called Trinidad. When you say snake to us, we get all kinds of things running around in our head, like snakes are dangerous creatures. They can kill you. And uh, for the people like my wife, who happens to be of the Christian persuasion, snakes are the devil. Okay. We don't want a snake in our house. But to you Canadians, glorious, good people that you are, you hear different things to what we hear. You hear, I don't have to take it for a walk. It doesn't make any noise, right? You hear, I don't have to pick up any poop. You hear those wonderful things. But to me, when my child says, I want a snake, I'm, no, there's no way that's going to happen. But it was my first child. And due to the fact it was my first child, I read a lot of books on parenting. And the books on parenting say that you should be very careful how many no's you say and how many yeses. There's supposed to be a ratio that you fall inside of that is good for the development of the child. So I wanted to say no, but I didn't. I said, uh, honey, um, snakes are an exotic animal. And because I, as a stand-up comedian that have traveled the world, I've seen a sign in the airports that say that exotic animals are illegal. Mm -hmm. And that means I, I love you. Uh, you are my child. I will do anything for you, but I cannot do this for you because the laws say that I cannot. Mm. Things were good, right? Everything seems to be working towards my favor. Uh, not, not necessarily because my child knows that we have a law firm that we have on speed dial. She <laughs> said, Daddy, just let me check with the law firm first because she knew that laws can be interpreted. So she picked up the phone and called the law firm because I'm an idiot and I encouraged her to do that because it's <laughs> responsible. And she called the lawyers and she explained to them what she wanted to do. These are the questions that, that my lawyer asked my child. Where do you live? What type of snake are you looking at? Because apparently those were important questions, right? When she told him, uh, Python, I live in Barrie, he then told her that your father is absolutely correct. The type of snake that you want, the area in which you live, it's actually illegal. And then I was smiling, my wife was smiling, no snake coming in the house. We were happy once again. Uh, and, and then my lawyer uh, utilized a legal term that I didn't understand at the time. I understand now. He said, however, <laughs> he said, however, you can apply for an exempt. And in this exempt, here's what you write. And here's the government agency to fire it off to. Long story short, uh, residing in my house right now upstairs is a, uh, a white ball python with blue eyes because the devil has blue eyes. Anyway, <laughs> so I tell you that story because I wanted you to know and understand how important it is to have lawyers uh, at your <laughs> access to be able to answer questions for you and will be able to do things for you that you... Now, long story short, this, this might sound like a negative story. There's a snake living in my house right now. Okay? <laughs> but it's not a negative story because in the Caribbean, there's a lesson that the elders always teach. They always tell you that there's an equal amount of negative and an equal amount of positive in every scenario, but what it depends on is your perspective of it. See, I told you what we will perceive as the negative part, but the positive showed up afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The positive part was the fact that my mother-in-law said, the day you get a snake in this house, I'm not coming back. See, everything works out well. There's negative, there's positive, 
but she fucking lied. She came back. Anyhow, so what we're going to do <laughs> is we <laughs> see, okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to toss it over to our second comedian and our second comedian rush has been on JFL. She dot the Toronto fringe and is releasing her half an hour special on out TV later this year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome rush. Kazi, boom! Hey, what's ah, up? Look at that! I'm Woo! good with this shit. What? You are doing so good, Mark. What? You figured out the internet. You broke the internet. I, it's great. I, I'm surprised I sent you an email. I'm, I'm, I <laughs> have not seen it yet, so I don't know if you did. Oh, <laughs> shit. <Okay>. Very good. <laughs> You're making it this far. Uh, anyway, this is the gay month. It's the gayest month of the year. It's the most gayest time of the year. It's Go Pride Rainbow. Month. Yay! It's Pride Month. I look forward to this month every year because uh, uh, I'm I'm actually non-binary, um, and uh, I came out a couple of years ago, but I didn't like announce I was coming out, so I just sort of like said it on stage as a preface to another joke, and no one applauded. So I'm still pissed off about that. <laughs> so, it's just like this hatred that I carry with me. But yeah, like I I didn't know I was non-binary when I was in high school. This is like 20 years ago, right? Like Google didn't exist yet. We didn't even have like cable internet. You know what I mean? Like Google didn't exist. I was talking. Like, we had Ask Jeeves. Who remembers what Ask Jeeves was? Woo! Oh, yeah. Vaguely. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't woo that, like, because I didn't want to talk to a robot butler about what my gender was. You know what I mean? It's just like, I'm like, cool. Okay, cool. I must be a trans man. You know, like just just an assumption that I made. Like, okay. I mean, like we had cable internet. Like it would take three days to download a fake new to Britney Spears, right? <laughs> like by the time you got to the third day, you got to her nipples. You're like, these are obviously not her breasts. You know, but like. I've already masturbated 16 times anyway. So you print it out, you put in your duotang for later. Like porn was hard 20 years ago is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> a difficult time for porn. Um, but yeah, you have to work for it. Well, yeah, so I thought I thought it was a trans man uh, or more like a trans teenage white boy because we listen to like a lot of Papa Roach and Lincoln Park, you know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to time boobs down, wear a fake beard, fuck a lot of bitches, uh, sometimes nice ladies. But mostly bitches because you get what you give. You know, it's the secret. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, I've never read the book, The Secret, <laughs> but I think it's exactly about that. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I like had a wallet with a chain on. Like, I was a giant asshole, is what I'm trying to say. I was a giant <laughs> asshole. And um, my parents were like, cool. Like, my parents are Muslim immigrants from Bangladesh, right? They're just like cool with me bringing girls home. They're like, we moved to Canada. This is what Canadians do. They're all lesbians with beards, you know, like just really assimilated. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> they don't even have that accent. I do that for the white audience because I feel like <laughs> they, they need to know that my parents are brown and they won't get it without that fake accent. But yeah, so like it, uh, it it's weird. So like um, in high school, like I, I found out I was pansexual by mistake. And I like saying that I'm pansexual instead of bisexual because I prefer that strangers think that I have sex with pan. <laughs> like <laughs> over that I don't exist, you know, just like. Um, but yeah, so uh, during this time I tripped and fell and landed onto a penis and I was like, oh, fuck no. You know, just, uh, <laughs> I like dick too. <laughs> and uh, the guys that I like do not like the beard I'm wearing, right? So I just didn't wear the beard all the time. Anyway, so every once in a while I bring a guy home, my dad was super excited. He'd come to the door, he'd knock, he'd be like, that's me knocking, right? Like, Rush, what are you doing? And I'd be like, dad, I'm busy. Um, or more like, dad. I'm busy because I wanted to sound like Chad Kruger when I was in high school. That was a goal. <sighs> really love that Nickelback. Uh, so my dad would leave. He'd come back. He'd knock on the door again, and he'd be like, "Do you want twenty dollars?" Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, every time I fucked a guy, my dad would slip a twenty dollar bill under the door just to like reaffirm that heteronormative activity was encouraged in the house. <sighs> right. Wow. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty great. Like if any of these young gentlemen watching the show want to make ten dollars. Um, I still live with my dad. It's possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a, let's just do this. Actually, there's a pandemic. There's a pandemic. This is so funny to me. Like, okay, 2019, when, okay, when New Year's 2020 happened, everyone was bitching about 2019. Be like, fuck 2019. The future's 2020. They got those 2020 glasses on and people get made all these posts. Like, do you want to apologize to 2019 now or what? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, just like, it's ridiculous. And like, I remember like New Year's Eve 2020, I was dating this guy and uh, like he he started making like a New Year's resolution. New Year's resolutions suck. Like no one keeps them, right? But like this guy's like, I'm going to take better care of my mental health. 
And I'm like, cool. And then he like broke up with me the next day. And I'm like, fair, you know, but it's like the worst New Year's resolution, right? And like, I was, I was so bummed. I was so bummed. Uh, my husband was stoked, but I was pretty sad. <laughs> my boyfriend dumping me. And it's just like, this is one of those things. It's just, I don't know. It was just sad. It was just sad because I, dating is hard enough as it is. And then you have the pandemic happening and now dating is like online and it's through these screens and you don't know like if you have any sort of like a chemistry with the other person you don't know if they even like what did they smell you know what i mean also like i said i i'm married i live with my husband so he's always photobombing my date so it's really hard it's really hard to date when you're married i guess is what i'm trying to say i know <laughs> Relatable stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I'm talking. About. But the thing is, like, I'm not cheating on my husband. We're polyamorous, which means we get to date other people and like we like bang the world. And like, COVID's been bad, and the quarantine's been pretty bad. And like, a lot of shitty things happen. Like, my grandfather died of COVID. But I think the worst thing that happened is that like we're being forced into monogamy, and that's just not what we signed up for when we got married. Like <sighs> now. I Wake up every day seeing the same face. Super relatable stuff. I know you guys get it. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh oh my god high school was weird high school was 20 years ago i cannot believe how old i am it's so funny that mark harry's saying that i'm i'm young still but high school was 20 years ago i have abortions older than most kids starting off comedy <laughs> right now this is what's happening um wow. and like yeah dating in the early 2000s was really uh difficult as a queer person because like we didn't have like things like apps and stuff we have to go on the cable like dial up internet sorry and like go to a chat room and like ASL it and like find someone. I found this girl online um, and she lived in Scarborough and I was in Rexdale and I was like, cool, let's make this work. And we were talking on the phone to each other because this is 20 years ago, we didn't have digital <laughs> cameras, right? So we had to describe ourselves to one another. And I was like, and she sounded like a Shanti. So I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna date a Shanti. This is gonna be amazing, right? <laughs> and I'm like, um, do you, like, what's your ethnic background? Do you mind me asking? And she's like, I don't, because it was 2001, right? Nobody minded. <sighs> she's like, I'm half Jamaican, half Indian. I'm like, that's amazing. That's what I assume Ashanti is. I don't have Google yet, you know? Um, but I was like, what, do you look like a celebrity so I can picture it in my mind's eye, you know, just because we don't have cameras. And I'm like, please look like Ashanti. Please look like Ashanti. Like, I'm really hoping for it. And she's like, I do. My friends say I look a lot like Jaw Rule. And I'm oh. like... You know what? That was like my first reaction, but my second reaction was that's the exact same music video I was thinking of. So let's do this. Let's go on this date, right? Uh, and like three hours transit is a long time. So I'm like, let's meet in the middle instead of going to Scarborough, going to Rexdale. Let's go to like Yorkdale Mall. Mm -hmm. right in the middle. I'm going to take you to the fanciest restaurant I can think of. Let's go to Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> right? And I'm going to buy you whatever you want. I'm really masked at the moment. I'm a Chad. I'm like, buy whatever you want, baby. And she does. For dinner, she gets this thing called the cedar wood plank salmon, which is a $30 fish piece on wood, which, you know, exactly what it sounds like. And for dessert, she got this thing called the volcano, which is like 15 brownies on top of one another with whipped cream, ice cream, and sparklers on top. And the entire staff comes out screaming, volcano, 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 because we needed more attention, right? Being an interracial queer couple with my beard falling off at the table. Um... <laughs> Let me just say this, okay? Like that dinner, she cost me $70 that night, okay? $70, like that's 20 years ago. With inflation, that's $3 million of now money. Okay? <laughs> Reach of the financial group that's sponsoring us can, can, can confirm that, right? But yeah, so I'm like, I just spent $3 million. I guess I'm going to Scarborough to bang Ja Rule because she did look like Ja Rule. She wasn't lying. She wasn't lying about that. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm trying to say is like dating as a queer person in the early 2000s is a lot like going to Firefest, you know? Cause oh. you gotta, yeah. cause you're traveling very far. You're spending a lot of money and jaw rule is kind of there, you know? <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna leave you guys on one last thing. You guys want a life hack for me? You guys want some advice? Cause my life is going Ooh. so well. I know you do. Uh, yeah. Did you know you could say no to a breakup? <sighs> did you know that Mark? No. Oh, you can well, say yeah. no. You can say no. This is the thing I've learned. Okay, I was dating this guy. He was trying to break up with me because I was cheating on him. And I was like, uh, no, thank you. And he's like, that's not how breakups work. I'm like, well, it takes two of us to consent. Get woke, bitch. Right? Yeah. And he was like, what? I'm like, I'll give you $5 right now to fuck me. And he's like, you don't have $5. So I went to my wallet, produced a really sexy toonie because it didn't have five bucks. 
smacked it on the table. He thought it was charming enough that he didn't break up with me that instant. So that became our thing. Every time I wanted to bang or just avoid another breakup, I'd smack a toonie down. We'd go to town. And then one day he thought it'd be really cute to flip it on me. He's like, I made lobster. Let's fucking do this. And he threw a toonie down onto the coffee table. And I was so fucking offended. Like, how dare you offer me money for sex, you know? Like, no one pays me for sex unless it's my dad, all right? Like, I don't know if you can do oh. that. That's from the back. Yeah, it's a yeah. call back. Yeah. For those of you who are grossed out, it was just when my dad gives me a $20 bill and we split, yeah. Anyways, my dad gave me more money than this engineer did. But also, you guys should smack your toonie down for humor for hunger. Yay, please donate some money oh. under Mark's name so we win this week. Or I guess this month. I think that's it, Mark. Thank you. Boom! Look at that. Yo, yes, I agree with her 110%. Smack that money down. Uh uh, not 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 on the girl that you're trying to <laughs> get busy with, because uh Cassie can say what she wants, but I don't I don't think that's allowed anymore. <laughs> Well, actually, in New York, in New York, it's allowed because prostitution is now legal in New York. And theoretically, I think in Toronto, it's uh, not illegal in Canada. It's just body house laws. You can ask the lawyers you have on speed dial. But yeah, it's we should. And sex work is not illegal. It's the solicitation of the selling. Oh, like, oh. So it's the solicitation of prostitution that's illegal, it's, it's, but not the actual transaction. Yes. So I can't you advertise. Can't that's basically so it. You can't advertise prostitution. <laughs> you but can't. You, can. you can't. Also, there's a body house law. You can't practice in the same home multiple times because then that house becomes illegal. It's very. So confusing. you have to move around yeah. in an Airbnb. Ladies and gentlemen, Stuart Esteen, <laughs> LLP, barristers <laughs> and solicitors, if we could get them to answer this pressing question, there's a lot of people trying to earn money. <laughs> right now due to the pandemic oh my god thank yeah. you very much sign up to my only fans if you want to see boobs okay it's oh <laughs> yes um, slash rush zilla sign up there i i don't there's no shame in my game uh i was thinking about starting on only fans because i didn't know what the hell only fans was uh, <laughs> I thought it was just a site where, you know, somebody who has suedo celebrity could have a, a <laughs> forum to just talk to only their fans. You can't I had, I had no idea there was feet and titties and I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know that was going on. I don't know. I'd sign up for it. I'd wax my feet if I could show that and somebody would be attracted. I wonder if I could start one anyway. Uh, thank you very much, Rush. That was incredibly illuminating as per usual. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, if you've been enjoying the hilarities that you've seen thus far, please donate to humorforhunger.com. All the monies collected, including those toonies that you might slap down, <laughs> uh, are going to be sent directly to the food bank. That's where it's going because we need to help the people that need the assistance right now. Listen, some people, I tell all my comedian friends right now, yeah, there's some people that have done bad in this pandemic. Don't get me wrong, uh, especially people in the entertainment industry. It's been tough for us, right? Because we haven't been able to apply our trade anywhere. Uh, ballerinas, uh, th uh, th thespians, stand-up comedians, all of us have suffered. But there were some people that, you know, got to work from home and didn't have to pay to go in a, a Uber to go to work. Uh, they worked, you know, remotely from home and they still were getting paid and they couldn't go out at night and drink and stuff like that. So they've been stacking cash. And when they do show up, when entertainment is finally open and welcome in this world once again, they're coming out to be very receptive to what we will be putting on stage for them. So it'll be like the last pandemic was 1918, I believe. And then came what was called the roaring twenties. I think we will once again have the roaring twenties when all of this is opened up. When Mr. Ford, I, I drive a Ford, but I'll never vote for one. Anyway, that's a, that's a political <laughs> rant. Uh, our next comedian, <laughs> this is what a wonderful night of comedy thus far. All right. <laughs> Uh, our next comedian, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, goes by the name of Leonard Chan. Now, 
I have several pages of his bio in front of me, but I'm just going to read a couple of them because he's a very accomplished individual. So he doesn't need any more credits. He's done the Halifax Comedy Festival, the Winnipeg Comedy Festival, Just for Laughs, Kim's Convenience, which was picked up in the US and he's probably making bank and uh, has written for and performed on this hour has 22 minutes. Uh, listening to him, I feel extremely lazy, which would be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my good friend. And he's also been on my podcast, Mr. Leonard Chan. Yay! How's everybody doing? Leonard! You hear anybody? <laughs> you hear us, baby. Oh so, yeah, so comedy is weird now. Uh, but yeah, I'm very happy to be here in my, uh, in my basement. This is a real brick wall. I built yeah. this just for the show. <laughs> uh, I like walls. I'm, I'm, I'm Chinese. I think walls are great. He's a builder. So, uh, you're welcome, Canada's top mayor. I am uh, very happy to be here and supporting. Um, yeah, so I have this wall. Uh, just Mexicans and Mongolians behind this wall right now. Where it's, it's working really well. Uh, so, yeah, I can't hear anybody, uh, which is weird. Normally, like, you know, I do comedy live. I'm in a club. There's like, an audience. I can hear everybody. But uh, in this case, it's fine. I want you to know that my ego is doing a lot of heavy lifting right now. Like every time I tell a joke, this is what I see in my head. Oh, uh -huh. oh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, comedy is weird. It's a little bizarre. You know, you know what comedy feels like to me right now? It feels like, you know, those like, those like uh, those stories when like somebody brings a loved one back from the dead with witchcraft, <laughs> they come back all fucked up. Like that's what comedy is for. Right <laughs> but I've done weird shows, you know. I've done a lot of weird shows as a comedian. That's just what happens, you know. Like one of the last shows I did before uh, pandemic was a birthday party, which I'll tell you right now, I did not enjoy it. Okay, because I didn't get into this business to not be the center of attention, but. Also, it was like a really weird party. All right, like the theme of the party was the Great Gatsby. <laughs> that's not the weird part, that's not the weird part. No, everybody there was Asian. Oh. Yeah, guys, that's the weird part. Doing the Great Gatsby. Remember 1920s America when Asians were doing great? <laughs> Yeah, me neither, all right? Like the only historically accurate person there was the DJ, because she was laying down tracks. Oh. Uh, oh. <laughs> I got that. Yeah, if you didn't laugh at that, you need to read a fucking book. Uh, <laughs> it's a part of our heritage. They had a heritage minute about it. Look at that. <laughs> it was just Asian Heritage Month, so, you know, we're. <laughs> it's over now. It's over now. Uh, so, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I uh, I know it's been it's been it's been a good time. It's been a good time. I uh, I guess you know uh, it's a pan it's been a pandemic for a while. I think you guys I don't know if you guys have noticed <laughs> it's been a bit of a pandemic. Uh, but I don't know if you guys know uh, remember where you guys were when the pandemic began. But I was on a cruise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, real smart. Uh, you know, and it's not like my wife and I didn't know what was going on. Like, this was the headline when we got on the boat. <laughs> so it's like, wow. all right, so we're idiots. But we got on the boat because we were like, it's going to be fine. It's fine. You know, it's not killing white people yet. We're going to be fine. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and, then, and then it spread over to Italy, right? And my wife and I are like, oh, no. And by the way, this has always been the relationship between China and Italy, right? Did, China invented pasta. Did you guys know that? Yeah. China invented Pasta. Oh. And then Italy, Italy took it and they took it to a whole nother level. Just like coronavirus. <laughs> oh. Oh. Too soon? Dark? Real dark. Oh. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's going to get worse. Uh, <laughs> but we're on this boat. So my wife and I are on this boat and we think everything's going to be fine. And then March 13th, 2020 is when we're supposed to get off this boat. And we're in San Juan, Puerto Rico. And then the captain gets on the horn and is like, yeah, they declared a state of emergency. Nobody's getting off this boat. And my wife and I are like, oh, we fucked up. <laughs> yeah. We live on the boat now. We fucked up. <laughs> and, uh, and we didn't know what was happening. And the cruise director's trying to distract everybody. He puts on movies. Distract he puts on A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood and A League of Their Own, both of which are movies starring Tom Hanks, all right, this wonderful man. <laughs> <laughs> quarantine, by the way. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> and by the way, if you're trying to distract people from the coronavirus, maybe you don't put on a movie starring our most famous actor with coronavirus, all right? <laughs> oh, by the way, also, when I say wife, this is what I mean. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a rough pandemic. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so anyways, uh, after like three hours, we're in limbo. We don't know what's going to happen. And the captain gets on the horn. He's like, all right, we figured it out. We're going to go to Florida. Florida's going to let us in. And I said something I have never said before, and I will probably never say again, which is, Thank God for Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Florida's amazing. They're warm. They're welcoming. They don't give a shit what diseases you have. They will let you in. It's amazing. So we set sail for Florida. Two days. And the captain's like, oh, by the way, open bar. And everybody's like, yay! Because apparently the only difference between Lord of the Flies and Animal House is free booze. So <laughs> we, get to Fort La we get to Florida, and they drop us off in Fort Lauderdale in the middle of spring break. So my wife and I are just like, <laughs> we're surrounded by these like half naked American teenagers all over each other, you know, and we're like, ooh, like the height of the pandemic. And they're just all, and we're like, oh man, we got to learn Mandarin. <laughs> it's America's <laughs> They're done. It's over. America's done. I mean, America used to be great, right? They used to be great once upon a time. They used to, like 60 years ago, they were amazing, right? 60 years ago, they invented a vaccine for polio. They put a man on the moon. And now Americans don't believe in vaccines or the moon. So, learn <laughs> Mandarin. <laughs> <laughs> we opened Jersey Shore in the middle of a pandemic. Jersey, by the way, is a state, Desiree. Uh, Wow. Like, this is, this is, look, why did they need to do this? <laughs> this is what they're trying to save. It's unnecessary. They could have closed Jersey Shore down forever, decreased the spread of coronavirus, increased the spread of literacy. It would have been an <laughs> opportunity. And they missed it. So anyways, I'm, uh, we got the hell out of there as fast as we could. We got back to uh, Canada. And I'm happy to be here in Canada. It's nicer. Uh, you know, like the leadership is better, I would say. Like we have Justin Trudeau, right? He's great. He's like our Obama, right? He's young. He's handsome. He's black. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude got darker every time. <laughs> like so many pictures came up. He got darker every time. This is what happens when you elect a drama teacher as the leader of your country. So. <laughs> Anyways, we ended up back in uh, <laughs> in Toronto, and I've just been quarantined here. Just been quarantined here. It's been fine, uh, and it's been a year. It's been a year since this pandemic has began. It's been like a one. Like we've had an anniversary of a pandemic, which is great. <laughs> you know. By the way, I looked it up, and the uh, the traditional gift for a one year anniversary is paper. So. This is what I got the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Expensive paper. <laughs> because it's shit. Uh, <laughs> remember that? Remember, like, when we first got back and, like, toilet paper was everything to us? Like, people were hoarding it. Like, toilet paper was our currency. And, of course, now that we've been doing all the stimulus printing, our currency is toilet paper. But that's a whole other, <laughs> that's a whole other TED Talk. Uh, but yeah, no, I was fine. I remember everybody was like freaking out, like going like just loading up on toilet paper. But like, look, I don't want to brag. I'm a pretty successful comedian. <laughs> like, I have toilet paper money, okay? <laughs> Two ply. Well, but even by the end, like I had like a pallet of it, but even by the end, I was like, I was counting squares, you know, I was conserving. <laughs> <laughs> Which I've never had to do before. It's crazy. But it was good. Like, on the one hand, I used less toilet paper than I've ever used in my life. But on the other hand, I also fingered my own asshole more than I ever have in my life. So, touchy. You need, uh, you need the ply. The ply is important. You can't skimp on the ply. <laughs> but now nah, it's been fun. Like, you know what? Like, I thought this was going to be a lot harder. Like, but like a month into this pandemic, I was like, oh, wow. Turns out I don't like people. <laughs> don't need them. Uh, it's just been me and my wife. We've been here. We've been playing board games a lot, which uh, I don't know. If it, oh, by the way, this is the only board game that we had. So that's. Wow. <laughs> Pandemic. Wow. <laughs> Not the greatest of distractions. Uh, <laughs> I've become more of an alcoholic. I don't know if that's. Uh, 
if that's the case with any of you guys. Uh, I mean, not a crazy amount, like like a glass a day. You know, I mean, this this is the, this is the glass, but <laughs> just a glass, just a glass a day. Uh, I will say, like the one thing I'm glad I did was um, stock up on on weed, <laughs> on marijuana. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's legal now, so whatever, we can talk about it. Uh, although it's always felt legal. Although I will say this, as a 40-year-old, it feels really good to be able to buy weed whilst earning air miles. Uh, <laughs> but I like the edibles, man. I'm really into the edibles. I don't know if any of you are. Um, love them. I can never get the dosage right. It fucks me up every time. <laughs> the first time I did edibles, I took too much. I had a bit of a cold, and I couldn't breathe. I thought I was going to die, and I was so mad. I was like, really? Fucking going to take taken out by brownie? Like, that's how it ends. <laughs> I was so mad because I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna be the one. I'm gonna be the first guy in the world, in the history of the world, to die of a marijuana overdose." Uh, I'd be like, "That guy goes to a party, can't handle a shit, just ruins it for everybody else." <laughs> and the thing that really worried me, I was like, "Oh my god, if I die from this, I'm gonna make new stereotypes for Asians. Like people uh, gonna be like, yeah, Asians, they can't drive, they have small dicks, and marijuana kills them." Uh, <laughs> boom, boom. What? Wow, wow. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not gonna, I don't really do a lot of drugs, just the marijuana, uh, occasionally some shrooms. I won't inject anything, I won't snort anything. I will inject the vaccine though, for sure. Uh, I already have, I got, I got my first dose. I got AstraZeneca, uh, <laughs> you know, because like basically I got this vaccine like a day before they were like, oh, we really shouldn't have given that to you. <laughs> <laughs> this discontinued vaccine flowing through my veins. Well, not flowing because I'm a fucking clots. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh -oh. but, uh, I get it now. I get it, anti vaxxers I get it. You know, and you know, here's the thing: like, I, I actually do kind of understand where the anti vaxxers are coming from, right? Because like, if if their concern is safety, that makes sense, right? Like, if because the vaccine is supposed to take like five to ten years to come out, this one came out in under a year, and everybody's like, "Oh my god, it's a miracle!" But like, it's also suspicious, right? Right, like I, if I ordered a pizza from Pizza Pizza and it showed up at my door in two minutes, <laughs> I'd be like, "Oh my God, it's a miracle!" But it's also suspicious. <laughs> I'm still gonna eat that pizza just like I got the vaccine, but I can't be confused if something terrible happens to me, you know. But like, what's the worst thing that can happen? Autism. I'm already a comedian. It can only help. <laughs> <laughs> But my wife, she actually did, uh, she did a degree in holistic nutrition. She came out a little bit anti-vax. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we don't have kids. <laughs> I mean, not anymore. <laughs> we don't have kids. Uh, I don't think we should have kids. It's not a good idea. I mean, this world's not a great place. But also, I think we would just have real different ideas of how to raise our kids. Because right? first of all, look, I married a white woman because screw those white guys and their Asian girl fetishes. I'm taking one back to the <laughs> yeah. But here's, here's a fun fact, by the way. I, uh, my wife's name is Jackie. And if you guys are paying attention, my last name is Chan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jackie Chan. <laughs> what? It's the irony of my life, try to take one back for the team, convince a white woman to love me, marry her, turn her to the most famous Asian in the world. <laughs> I got married for that joke. Uh, <laughs> that's why we can't have kids. Like, I'm Chinese, she's half Scottish, half Irish. Our kids would be alcoholics without the enzymes to process alcohol. <laughs> So yeah, we don't have kids. We just uh, we have cats. We have cats. We have lots of cats. Because my wife. Okay, so my wife turned this this little rescue, uh, a, a foster home for cats. My wife rescues cats. That's her thing. She did this thing called TNR. It's called trap, neuter, rescue. So she traps the cats, neuters them, rescues them. I was the first. Uh, <laughs> We have so many cats in this house right now. Like right now, I'm looking at my monitor. I'm looking at the webcam. But on the other side, this is what I see. Ah! Judgmental. <laughs> yeah, just judgment. I'm just bombing in front of these goddamn cats all day long. Uh, but it's good. You know what? Like, because my wife is an essential worker. She's out of the house. I am a comedian. I'm very non essential. <laughs> all right. Uh, but hey, so is Beyonce. Beyonce, totally non essential. All right. I am just as <laughs> Beyonce. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. 
So I'm glad we have these cats, you know, because like I talk to them, they're smart. We have arguments about politics, all right? Like the other day, <laughs> I was having this argument with one of my cats about who our favorite socialist leaders were, and I said Lenin, and they said Mao. Mao. <laughs> It's one of the dumbest jokes I've ever written. It's but look, I, gotta, I gotta finish up. But like, here's the thing. Like, my, it's important that we we, especially during a pandemic, but like at all times, we gotta support each other, right? Like, and that's really what marriage is about. It's about supporting each other and giving each other permission to be happy and follow our dreams. And that's what my wife is doing. She quit a high-paying job in consulting to take a no-paying job in animal rescue. Good for her. <laughs> well, we fucked up my dreams, but that's fine. <laughs> But that's what we got to do. Like, she quit her job. She's following her dreams of animal rescue. I quit my job. I'm following my dreams of doing comedy. All right. <laughs> I support her. She loves me. She supports me. But I think we've hit a point in our relationship where it's time for us to open up our marriage. Because we need somebody to pay for things. <laughs> dreams are so fucking expensive. Okay. <laughs> All right. Boy, boy, girl, I don't care. If their assets are liquid, my sexuality is fluid. <laughs> all right, you guys have been amazing. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Hunger for Humor, donate all the monies. Um, yeah, this is, this is incredible. Thank you so much, Barry. Uh, it's It's been a blast. Have a good night. Wonderful Woo! job to everyone. Look, everybody's on the screen now all at the same time. You I wonder if I can get it. Look at this. Look at this. I got everybody on at the same time. Oh, my God. And, and, and the ticker tape rolling at the bottom with hunger for humor. Please donate as much as you can. Um, the Canada's top mayor said such a great show. Cannot wait to share this everywhere. Thanks for showing up and donating. And uh, once again, I am competing against Danish Anwar, and I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> that punk ass trying to show off. I don't like him. <laughs> you guys did an awesome job. Thank you very much for donating uh, your time and coming out here and sharing your skill set, which has been laying dormant for the past 16 months. <laughs> All right, I will now go uh, into solo mode. Bye, everybody. Pew. Okay. Did you uh, even get to wave? Okay. You did. No, I didn't. Okay, hang on. Everybody wave. <laughs> there we go. There you go. <laughs> Look, Leonard doesn't want to wave because we've persecuted too cool. his people long enough. I can't, yeah. I, I'm not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. What an incredible show that we had for you guys tonight. Um, but this is by, by no means our last show. This was only our second in our string of shows. We have another one next week, Wednesday at 8 p.m. And the following Wednesday at 8 p.m. Uh, but you at any time, should you be watching this rebroadcast at a later stage, donate to the food bank and let's help those people that need the help in this time of need. Once again, there's a lot of people that uh, didn't do well as a result of the pandemic. Uh, if you don't have the ability to you know, give money, no problem at all. What you can do is share this link so that other people who may have done well during the pandemic, uh, they can see it and maybe they can donate. Or we'll be very happy for you doing something like that. But uh, let us not uh, say enough good things about the people that helped put this show on tonight. That would be, once again, Lily Financial Group. Uh, these people are actually helping to pay for this show, so we, we appreciate them. Please check them out. Uh, Stuart Estin, LLP, Barristers and Solicitors, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. But thank you very much to them, as well as Infinity Printing Solutions. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to put on this series of shows. And as well, Mofat Mazda, I apologize for not having Zoom Zoom up on the screen, but you know I love you regardless. And Barry Uncovered, we, we can't do anything without Barry Uncovered. And a Canada Top Mayor Award, thank you very much for all that you do helping us put on the show and here's a little kudo for me. Thank you, Mark Trinidad. I did an amazing job. You have no idea the anxiety that I didn't go to bed till 3 a.m. because I was worried about trying to put this shit on. I have, I'm technologically challenged. Uh, Desiree has Paul C thingy and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing when it comes to technology. I don't think I was supposed to cuss at that point, but 
what's done is done. All right. Thank you very much. I will see you next week at 8 p.m. Uh, same time, same place, and same donation at Humor for Hunger. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>